Okay, so the uh, digestive system is put into two groups. We have the alimentary, alimentary canal. Okay, uh, the alimentary canal and the accessory organs that go with it. Okay, um, this is basically the tube, the alimentary canal is basically your tubes that go from beginning to end. Okay, so beginning all the way, all through the small intestines and the large intestine to the end. Okay, that is the um, alimentary canal. Okay, its job is to ingest, digest, and absorb uh, the food and fluids that you consume and then eventually eliminate the byproducts. Okay, the accessory organs are those parts that are gonna help the passage of substances through the alimentary canal. Okay, those would include things like uh, the saliva glands, Okay, the mucus glands, um, the different glands in the stomach that release gastric digestive juices. Okay, the gallbladder and the pancreas. Uh, they also release different um, gastric juices to help uh, digest food and break food down. Okay, so some of the parts uh, to know. Okay, um, know the esophagus. Okay, this is our food tube. All right, here's the liver. It's located in the upper right quadrant area. Okay, stomach, pancreas. Okay, so there's the pancreas. Okay, the small intestine that is broken down into three parts. The first part is the duodenum. Second part is the jejunum. And the third part is the ileum. Okay, so these three things here make up the entire small intestine. And then you have the large intestine Okay, the ascending colon, transverse colon, descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and the anus. Okay, so those are the different um, parts there. And then also gallbladder and spleen. Okay, up here we have the uh, saliva glands. Okay, so these things here are the saliva glands. Okay, so this is not screen sharing. All right. <clears throat> okay, how about now? Still nothing. Okay, some people say yes. All right, got it. Okay. So uh, really what you missed, if the screen share was not there, um, was the different parts. Okay, and that was uh, the saliva glands, which are here. Okay, your food tube, which is the esophagus. All right, the liver, all this, gallbladder, pancreas, stomach, the small intestine, 
which is broken down into three parts, the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum, okay? And then the large intestine. Okay, uh, know these terms. So ingestion, mastication. Okay, so ingestion is where we actually introduce food into the stomach. Okay, uh, mastication is the process of chewing. And the way that food moves through the tubes is called peristalsis. Okay, it's a smooth muscle contraction, a constant smooth muscle contraction that allows food to be propelled through the tubes, okay, peristalsis. Uh, Deglutition is the act of swallowing. All right, our body uh, with respect to the digestive system does a lot of secretions. And its job is to lubricate, liquefy, and digest. Okay, it is very important that you have a mucosal lining. Okay. Very important to have a mucosal lining because it protects, um, it protects you. Okay, it protects the sensitive tissue that the food passes through, all right? You hurt the mucus, you are gonna get ulcers. Okay, that's one of the side effects of um, mucosal lining uh, problems, okay? And the way, the mo one of the most common ways people do that is by taking insects. Okay, NSAIDs is like ibuprofen and naproxen and Aleve, Advil, okay, stuff like that. Those are um, NSAIDs. It stands for non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. Okay, a side effect of NSAIDs is it decreases the gut mucosa, making you more susceptible to injury, such as um, ulcerations. Okay, water is important to be present to help liquefy the food better and to digest and absorb it. Okay, bile, and write this down, bile is stored in the gallbladder. Bile is stored in the gallbladder. Okay. Bile is released from the gallbladder. So after you eat, especially after you eat fats, okay, keep in mind people, a typical diet has carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. Okay, that is a typical diet. The consumption of fats is going to stimulate the gallbladder to release bile. The presence of bile allows you to emulsify the fat. And what that means is fat and water can now be, uh, come together, okay? So fat plus water can now come together. Normally they like to separate, okay? But when you emulsify them, you bring them together and break down the fats to even uh, smaller components. Okay, we have a lot of digestive enzymes and they are responsible to help with chemical digestion, which means it's gonna help you break down the food. Okay, digestion is both mechanical and chemical. All right, so mechanical is like chewing. Okay, so your teeth uh, is responsible to break down food, so make sure you write that down. Mechanical digestion would include the teeth to physically and mechanically break down the food. Once the food gets into the stomach, 
the stomach will continue to mechanically break it down. We also break food down chemically. Okay, for example, our saliva, our saliva has a bunch of chemicals in it, including <laughs> digestive enzymes that will help you break down food uh, to its smaller components. The stomach has a lot of chemicals that will help break the food down into its smaller components. Okay. Uh, absorption is the movement from the digestive tract into circulation. Okay. So, I mean, bottom line is we need nutrition to survive. So the way it actually gets into our body is through the absorption route, okay, from the digestive tract into circulation. And then eventually, and at some point, we eliminate the waste products. Okay, so we, the digestive system is operated by nerves, okay? the submucosal nerve plexus and the myenteric nerve plexus, okay? These are part of your autonomic nervous system, which means you do not consciously control the breakdown of food, digestion of food and all that stuff. You don't do consciously control it. Your autonomic nervous system does it for you. Okay, you have four layers to the stomach. Just look at it this way, starting from the inside. Okay, um, so we'll work from uh, inside out. So you do have the mucosal layer. And uh, this is where the food would actually be. Okay, and that lumen there. The lumen means basically it's like a tunnel. All right, uh, the next layer out is the submucosal layer. And you can see the submucosal glands that would release digestive juices and um, other substances into the stomach that aid in the continual breakdown of food. Okay, and then the next layer out is the muscle layer. So this is a type of muscle that is under autonomic control. So it does contract, but it does it on its own. The presence of food will force it to contract. And then you have the outside layer, the serosal layer. Okay, and that's what all this was talking about. In the submucosal layer, uh, this is where you find the nerves, blood vessels, lymph vessels. Okay, the enteric which means bowel, nerve plexus. So the enteric nerve plexus detect changes in chemical composition. Okay, food at the end of the day does have chemistry to it and your body does pick up on that and the presence of it will begin um, digestion. Okay, so one thing that happens is you get the smooth muscle contraction to help break down the food, to help move it from point A to point B. Your central nervous system and the reflex centers controlled by cranial nerve 10, okay, the vagus nerve, which is also cranial nerve 10. The stimulation is the sight of food, the presence of food, the smell of food, Okay, all these things will trigger uh, your body to prepare for digestion.
Okay, that is a reflex. And I think we've all been there when you get hungry enough and you see food. I mean, you can really feel your body start to kick in the gear to prepare for digestion. Okay, this statement here, uh, the sympathetic versus the parasympathetic. Okay, you write this down. The sympathetics do not digest food well. Sympathetics do not allow for proper digestion. Okay, that's why the sympathetics is known as fight or flight. Parasympathetics is rest and digest system. Okay, so you want to be in parasympathetics because uh, that's the best nervous system to be in if you're going to digest food, rest and digest. So when you're stressed, it's not a good idea to eat, okay, because this food is just going to hang out and um, it's just, there's just not going to be much function going on. Um, so some of the major chemical regulators, okay, one of them is serotonin. And this is the, uh, you can write, write this down as kind of a fun way of saying it, the feel-good hormone. Okay, this is the feel-good hormone. So um, this puts you in a good mood, okay, serotonin. Uh, it's also responsible for the feeding center. So healthy appetites, um, when you're hungry, you eat, and when you're full, you stop, uh, have to do with serotonin. Okay, people with low levels of serotonin uh, often find themselves depressed and not really in the mood for food. Okay, gastrin is a hormone that stimulates the release of uh, hydrochloric acid from the stomach, okay? This is a very, very important um, item to have released into your stomach because it helps you uh, break down proteins. It helps you um, kill microorganisms, right? So it's an, it's an acid, so it's also part of your defense, okay? Specifically, the parietal cells are the cells that release hydrochloric acid in your stomach. And gastrin is the hormone that tells it to do that. Now, clinically, a lot of people have a condition called hypochlorhydria, which means they have low hydrochloric acid release. Okay, and when this happens, they usually get digestive problems, heartburn, acid reflux and whatever, because they're not breaking down the proteins and the food properly because of uh, a lack of hydrochloric acid release, okay? That can be a side effect of medication people are on, meaning the, um, the hydrochloric acid decline. So a side effect of medication, for example, if people are on Nexium and Tums, and other proton pump inhibitors that will decline your hydrochloric acid function, okay? The secretin is a hormone that stimulates the pancreas to release its digest digestive juices. All right, the stomach is a C-shaped um, organ, okay? It does tend to favor the left side of the abdominal cavity. And here is the food, the food tube coming in. Okay, there's the food tube, the esophagus. All right, this area is known as the cardiac sphincter. So that's one name for it, the cardiac sphincter, uh, or in this picture has it as the cardioesophageal sphincter, okay? 
So in other words, there's a sphincter there, which means it's a valve that is designed to relax when food is present. So as you're swallowing food, it hits the sphincter, causing it to open or relax, allowing food to pass into the stomach. Okay. You have the lesser curvature of the stomach. Okay, right here, lesser curvature. Over here is the greater curvature. Okay, all these folds that you see, that's called rugae. You can see the three different muscle layers of the stomach, three different muscle layers of the stomach. Another very important structure, the pylorus or pyloric sphincter. Okay, these are the, the valves that allow food to pass into the small intestine. Okay, this is kind of like the gatekeeper. You can look at your stomach like a big blender. So you put food in it and blend it, which liquefies it, right? So now you have this liquid and all of that liquid doesn't just get dumped into the small intestine, okay? it enters into the small intestine in strategic amounts over time. And that is by way of the pyloric sphincter. Okay, so the stomach is a temporary storage site for uh, food. It is eventually broken down, it's churned and mixed. I like to use the blender analogy, you know, if you put an apples in there and bananas and lettuce and hamburger meat and whatever and blend it, it's going to turn into a liquid. Okay, it's kind of like what the stomach does. It does that through chemical and mechanical breakdown. Okay, it does this through different gastric juices. Okay, intrinsic factor is released from cells in the stomach because it is needed for the absorption of vitamin B12. Okay, um, so intrinsic factor binds to B12 and uh, B12 is actually carried to the bone marrow to tell the stem cells in the bone marrow to do their job, okay, which is pro proliferate and make uh, different forms of blood, okay? Very important um, vitamin there and you need intrinsic factor. Okay, the chief cells, which are cells in the stomach, okay, they um, release an enzyme Okay, they release your pepsinogens, which help you break down um, proteins. Okay, they help you break down proteins. Another very important structure is the parietal cell because it releases hydrochloric acid and the intrinsic factor that we looked at on the other slide. Okay. So you need hydrochloric acid if you wanna break down proteins and you need intrinsic factor if you want to utilize vitamin B12. So the parietal cells are very important. And by the way, uh, the proton pump inhibitors like Nexium and Tums um, inhibit parietal cell function so that you don't release hydrochloric acid and it limits the release of intrinsic factor, okay? Neither of which is a good idea. Okay, after food has been blended in the stomach, it is now called chyme. Okay, and that chyme enters into the first part of the small intestine, which is the um, duodenum. Okay, so that's the first part of the small intestine is called the duodenum. 
uh, keep in mind that it's one long tube, right? The small intestine is just one long tube. It's just that one part of it, okay, uh, the first part of it is the duodenum, and then the next part is the jejunum, and then the next part is the ileum. Okay, and the ileum is what connects to the uh, large intestine. Okay, so the ileum joins the large intestine at the ileocecal valve. The ileocecal valve. Okay, as your pancreas releases uh, enzymes, okay, remember an enzyme speeds up the reaction. So this helps us break down and digest food much, much quicker. Uh, the pancreas releases its digestive enzyme through ducts, okay, which is basically a tube that enters into the small intestine. Okay. Once food is in the small intestine, it has to go through the microvilli. Okay, this is a very important um, structure that most people hurt. Okay, most people hurt this by um, overuse of drugs, such as your NSAIDs. Okay, and there's other side effects of certain medication that hurt the microvilli and uh, gastrointestinal inflammation will hurt the microvilli. Uh, if you're allergic to gluten and dairy and that kind of thing, it will hurt the microvilli. And this system nourishes your body, okay? So that's why if you hurt this, you have just hurt yourself because you've um, decreased your body's ability to uh, nourish itself. Okay, and here's what that kind looks like. So once food enters into the stomach and is broken down, kind of like a blender, it's liquefied. And then what happens is in this area, okay, the body opens up the pyloric sphincter to allow a little bit of food to be introduced into the first part of the small intestine, which is the duodenum. Okay, here's those ducts we were talking about in the pancreas. So this yellow thing you see here is the pancreas. And this is the duct or these tubes that enter into the um, first part of the small intestine, right? So after you eat, now look at, here's the stomach. Okay, it's going to release food into this part. So it's called chyme at this point. Now you have the presence of chyme in your body. It's a chemical reaction. They're, oh, look at that. There's food. There's protein, the carbohydrates and fats. No problem. I'll release a bunch of digestive enzymes to break this stuff down even more. Okay, the large intestine is about five feet in length. It goes from ileocecal valve to anus. Its job is to absorb water and then expel waste, okay? So uh, if your body loses the ability to absorb water, then you get diarrhea, okay? Different things cause diarrhea. Um, cryptosporidium, you know, different infections or whatever, but uh, if a person is not absorbing water from the large intestine, it can lead to dehydration. So in other words, diarrhea, if it's prolonged, can lead to dehydration, which can actually create a lot of problems. Okay, so here's the ileocecal valve area. So the small intestine has been removed. Okay, otherwise the ileum would go into here, creating that ileocecal valve. 
okay? And then by this time, it is waste, it is matter that you will eventually uh, defecate out. All right, so uh, a certain amount of waste is allowed into the first part of the small intestine here, which is the ascending colon. All right, ascending colon goes up. You have the hepatic flexure, which means it does kind of a, a U-turn at the liver. So hepatic means liver. And then the matter is moving across the transverse colon to the splenic flexure, because this is where your spleen is. And then it goes down, which is the descending colon. And then it goes to the sigmoid colon and eventually expels to the anus as waste. Okay, we have the appendix. All right, so that is part of the lymph node system. There's a bunch of pack fans in here to help, um, you know, because this is waste, right? So the food that's coming in here, well, it's not really food at this point, it's, um, you know, waste or matter. And um, so because of that, you know, things can build up. So you need your appendix to be there to work for you, okay? Uh, if it works in overtime or there's other problems, it can lead to appendicitis. And if that's bad enough, you have to have it removed. Okay, another name for the large intestine is the cecum. Um, this part tends to be the cecum right there. So thus the ileocecal valve. Okay, the large intestine, also known as the colon, has those three parts, ascending, transverse, descending, and sigmoid. Sorry, four parts that we just looked at a minute ago. Okay, the rectum is the terminal end and ends at the anal canal. Uh, it does have a bunch of mucosal linings in there. Okay, some conditions you can get would be hemorrhoids and fistulas. Fistulas are abnormal growths of uh, tissue that start to hang out in the intestine area. Okay, yes, the appendix uh, does have a function and a purpose. I know there's some statements out there that say it doesn't, but it does. It's got um, lymph, lymphatic type uh, tissue in there, and uh, that kind of tissue is designed to help you break down, you know, things that don't belong there, okay? And then if that goes awry, then it starts to inflame. Okay, um, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and open, oh, well, no, never mind. Now I don't wanna get ahead. So we'll just finish up the rest of the digestive system next week. I was gonna say we can do a, another round, but we'll knock that out next week. Okay, any questions um, over the stuff that we covered today?